Hello and welcome. In this problem, um, we're dealing with rational and irrational numbers. So take a moment, pause the video, and try it on your own. Then when you're ready, resume the video and see how our answers compare. All right, so we're given four numbers. They call them L, M, N, and P. And here we know that L is the square root of 2. That is irrational. Right? That means if we try to represent it as a decimal, the decimal will go on forever without re any repeating pattern and without end. M is 3 times the square root of 3. Well, the product of 3, a rational number, and the square root of 3, an irrational number, also gives you an irrational result. So this is irrational. Now, I know the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 are irrational because, in general, you could say if you take the square root of a number, let's call the number A, right? If you're finding the square root of A and A is not a perfect square, a perfect square, then the square root of A is irrational. Now, this gets tricky um, with decimals. Let's say A is not a perfect square and A, we know that A is a part of um, the whole number group, right? So A has, to, we're talking about whole number cases. There are decimals that you can find the square roots of and those decimals aren't perfect squares, but if A is a whole number and it's an end, it's not a perfect square, um, then we know that uh, it's irrational. So the square root of 2, 2 is a whole number. Uh, 2 is not a perfect square. If you take two things and try to arrange them into a square, right? You, you draw you have two objects, let's draw them over here. You try to arrange them, let's say these two squares. You have two of them, one, two, and we're trying to form a square with them. You can't do it, right? Any way you combine these two things, you get some type of rectangle. So that means the number 2, because it can't be formed into a square, it's not a perfect square, and you can't find the square root of it uh, exactly. Um, and I was just writing some notation over here to say A is an element of, or that means it's a part of, the whole numbers. And my mind is blinking right now for the symbol for whole numbers, so I use N for natural numbers. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and I'll put a 0 on there, saying uh, it also includes 0, although I think my notation's off. Sorry about that. N is the square root of 16. That's 4. And 4, you can, you can represent that as a decimal 4.0 or a fraction, which means it's rational. So anything that could be written as a terminating decimal, a decimal that ends somewhere, this ends at 4.0 right away, or has some kind of repeating pattern like 0.3 repeating. Uh, those are rational decimals, and in general a rational number is something that can be written as the fraction of two integers. So like 1 over 2, that's an integer over an integer. Or negative 1 over 2, that's an integer over an integer. Those are rational numbers, and as decimals they terminate like this, oops, 0 0.5, or if you are familiar with one-third, that's the ratio of two integers, one over three, and that repeats, never ends, but because it has a repeating pattern, oops, we know it's rational, so it's 0 0.3 repeating. So that repeating three means it's going to be a rational decimal, has a repeating pattern. Um, and again, integers are positive or negative whole numbers. Lastly, square root of nine is three, and that's also rational. Okay. So which expression results in a rational number? So look at our choice. I'm going to zoom into choice three first. Um, oops, that's the answer. Sorry. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> three is the answer. Why? Because if you add two rational numbers, and this is always true, any two rational numbers, add them up, you get another rational number. Here, n plus p is just 4 plus 3, or 7. And 7 is, you can write as a fraction, 7 over 1, or any proportional uh, fraction works. A decimal that terminates, 7.0. Also works, that's rational. So the sum of two rational numbers is rational. What about the other cases? They're all irrational. Let's look at them. If you add two irrational numbers, right, you're always going to get an irrational result except when. Think about that. When, in this case, it's irrational, so we can't use it. But the only exception I can think of is that if we have opposites or additive inverses, right? Let's say you have negative square root of three, irrational, plus the positive square root of three, rational and we get zero. So zero is a rational number. So there are ways uh, to combine or add uh, irrational numbers if they're opposites and get a rational result. But in this case, uh, L and M are not opposites. There's two irrational numbers. M plus N, if you add a rational and irrational number, like these two, you get an irrational result. And I'm not sh I don't feel like there's any exceptions to that rule. Um, and then P plus L. Again, rational and irrational. Uh, P is rational, L is not. The sum is then irrational. All right, thanks. Hope this helped.